Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here I am back with a big bang. And you know, every time I came uh, with you, I have a very good friend with us, and uh, we have good friends and uh, good guests with us. And this time, we are back with another uh, guest. She is uh, very competent in her field, you know. And let me introduce who is she. Uh, you know, uh, she is. Uh, building a global movement to prioritize uh, psychological safety and this is one of the very important topics you know in today's world when everybody is talking about artificial intelligence uh, if somebody is talking about the human beings uh, if somebody is talking about the psychological safety then it must be appreciated and uh, she is multi-award winners for leadership in dei and employee engagement and the Certified Diversity Executive CTE plus CPCC Coach. And we will going to ask her what is CPCC Coach. And uh, when I was uh, going through, uh, you know, to uh, to know her, she wrote about uh, her in her, uh, you know, LinkedIn profile that I bring passion, integrity, and drive to my work, leading change keeping uh, relationships and projects on track and create great ways to work. And, you know, uh, she is multitasking. She is working on the project management and uh, she is an agile coach. And, uh, you know, she do a lot of things. And uh, we have, uh, and she is also operating, uh, you know, a website whose uh, name is vanguardvoices.com. And we will definitely going to ask about his passion, everything. And I will not speak and uh, let me introduce to you none other than Jessica. Hello, Jessica. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Well, I'm really doing great. Thank you so very much for asking me. And thank you so very much for coming into my show. Thank you for having me. Well, so how you are feeling? You are, you know, you are saying that you have never been into a podcast. So how are you are feeling right now? Oh, I'm feeling very fine. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so very much. Uh, Jessica, just tell me about uh, something about yourself, uh, how you started, uh, uh, what your uh, educational background and how you got, came into the psychological safety kind of stuff. Please tell about uh, something about you. Okay. So maybe I'll start from the personal aspect because sometimes that's more interesting. <laughs> sure, um, why not? I, I've been living in Switzerland for close to 18, 19 years. I come okay. from Canada. Right. And um, I have six flags on my door when you come to our home here. I have the Canadian flag where I'm from. I'm originally from India. My right, husband is German. Okay. And my he was brought up in South Africa. And we have a Filipino girl who belongs to our family as well. And we okay. have the Swiss flag on top that represents the three girls, our three daughters, who are right. 11, 8, and 7. Okay. And I mention this because I am a big proponent that no matter where we go in the world, we are all the same. Exactly. We are human beings. And yes. we all want to be seen, heard, valued, respected. And I've traveled to close to 40 countries um for my personal in in my personal time as well as professional time and and with that perspective i i continue to look at the human being first before anything else in in all of my work so that's, well, that's a little great. bit about me yeah. well that's it um you know this is uh, as i uh, told everybody that this is the ai work so you are working on uh, uh you know the psychological safety and, uh, you know, where there are human beings, we have the psychological feelings, we have emotions. And, you know, artificial intelligence does not have these stuff. So why you started this uh, when your voice is and what was in your mind? And, uh, you know, you are a technical person. So why you choose this subject? Uh, just want to ask you. Sure. So I've been working in the corporate world for over 20 years. Okay. And... When I began working right out, after, out of school, I had the mindset, it was kind of the way I was raised, work hard and you will succeed. Whatever you do, just put in the effort. 
And what I recognized okay. very quickly, and I've only ever worked in big corporations, what I recognized very quickly is sometimes work is not just about the work, it's the interactions and things around the work that make it sometimes more challenging and and won't necessarily help you in whether it is progressing in your career or whatever the goals um, you may have. And so I've observed a lot over the last 20 plus years. I've heard a lot of stories as well. And it was an, a number of years ago that I really heard the term psychological safety for the first time. And that's all about feeling free to express one's thoughts without fear. And as I started to connect the dots, I realized the foundation, the root cause for a number of the issues that we're seeing in the office place has to do with people holding back, whether okay. it's because of themselves or their team or the organization, there is something that holds people back. And so I got into this topic um, because of those lived experiences and stories but also because of the statistics out there that tell us time and time again, it's the foundation for success in any high performing team or organization. Well, you are very true. Exactly. It's like this. You are telling us, uh, you know, I also uh, work in a corporate culture and I'm working as a trainer, as a teacher as well. So uh, I am also working since last 20 years. Uh, and what I believe there are, every kind of person in the corporate uh, sector, you know. Some are introverts, some are extroverts, some are shy, some are unable to talk to the management. So, uh, you know, nowadays, Jessica, I just want to emphasize this uh, topic as well because I want to boost the motivation of the people because most of the time they don't get motivated uh, to get work in the corporate sector. Let me tell you something, and then I'm going to ask you an, another thing. Uh, there are few, there are almost every pupil, any pupil, who are working in the organization to get paid. They have some, uh, you know, necessities of life, the needs of life, and they want to build a quality of life. So they are working in the organizations, and uh, they are building a team. But uh, most of the time, they are unable to uh, get into a team. So what I uh, I want to ask you, uh, how you will instruct people how they can have the psychological safety, how they can be a part of a team in an organization. So uh, what do you say about this? Because everybody joins an organization with a good will. So why they leave the companies and why they don't have the psychological safety? Please elaborate this. Yeah. There are many reasons why one might not feel safe in their team. Um, it can be as simple as feeling feeling as if they're being ignored or excluded in conversations at work. It may be um, as overt as being bullied um, at work as well. It can also be about one's mindset and the stories that they are hearing before they've even entered into a team. So exactly. it really is, can be many, many topics. It could be down to the individual and their personality, their upbringing okay. um, and the way way they approach um, working in teams and, 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 and how they present themselves in teams or, and it can be the team and the organization themselves. I'm a big believer in putting in um, measures at all levels to ensure that that door is open for people to speak. And for people to speak, they need to have trust in the system to begin with. You are very right, exactly, uh, very true. Uh, I believe in this as well. Uh, how you help people when somebody came to you and uh, or you are helping somebody? How you start uh, helping or counseling game or heart regarding because uh, a lot of people have the psychological issues uh, they have emotions so they have the psychological issues they are under stress uh, you know uh, in this era so how you help them yeah to me it comes down to coaching and really understanding very deeply where that person is coming from 
And so asking them questions like, well, what is it about this topic that is important to you about not being able to speak up? What are the mindsets or what are what is the story you're telling yourself um, in this situation? Uh, what are your values? What's important to you um, that you hold on uh, dearly in every situation? Um, how closely are you living those values in this particular situation? So in one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, I do spend that time to deeply understand where that person is coming from. I have to say sometimes it is because the person has some limiting beliefs, self-limiting beliefs. Okay. And sometimes there, there are um, pressures or external influences, situations, which is hard to influence. Um, there's only so far somebody can take. The only thing we can control are our own actions. Exactly, exactly. Very true. Exactly. Jessica was uh, uh, reading Brian Tracy, and uh, he was writing in his book that every uh, employee who's working in a workplace, they have, uh, you know, three kind of, they have a self. And what is self? They have three kind of self. Uh, self ideas, self image, and self esteem. Three kind of self. Self ideas, self image, and self esteem. If all these selves are fulfilled, then the employee will love to work in that organization. So what does it mean that every organization have a culture, you know, every organization have uh, uh, a unique set of, uh, uh, you know, uh, goals to achieve in the organization. So uh, how managements work and how managements uh, collaborate to change the culture of the organizations? What do you say about it? So first, the way I define culture, in fact, I, I take this from the definition that Patty McCord once said, um, and I, I hang on to it because it resonates a lot with me. So what is culture? Culture are the real stories that people say in the hallways, not the ones that are published on the walls. Wow, the I love it. I love it. Amazing. Amazing. Culture yes. are the stories that permeate from the past the legends from the past. So if I'm new into the office place, what am I hearing on that first day? The yes, legends so from the past. And culture is how aligned are we with what we say and what we do? Wow. So what we say and what we do, it's the difference between what we say and what we do. Yes, what exactly. we say and what we do. Because many companies publish their values, they publish all their achievements, and, and there's a very glossy feel to the uh, to every company that advertises itself online. But the real stories are ones when you talk to the people who work for those companies. And so if management or executive management in such companies, if they want to shift culture, they need to understand what are the current stories in their organization. In addition to asking themselves, what do they say? in an authentic way. What do these they see and, and say about this their company? And to shift the culture in a way, if, if one believes that psychological safety truly believes is the foundation for success, and you know that there are some barriers in your company, you know that there are certain stories that are out there, well, what management should do is create more awareness on the topic. There needs to be more transparency about conversations and there needs to be a collective accountability. That means as a company, we say we uphold our values and one of them being that we feel free to express our thoughts without fear. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Jessica, I got your point, but here there is a point in my mind. Uh, the top management, uh, the makers of all the strategic policies in an organization. Uh, will, they all, will they always love to change the culture of the organization? Because I believe the culture of the organization is same as the mindset of the top management. So do they want to change their mindsets 
to change the culture of the organization. What do you say about it? I think executives management today who don't recognize the importance of psychological safety will quickly become an extinct organization in the future. Right. There are many organizations where, yes, the focus is on, you know, making money, saving money, our organizational goals. Cost reductions. Yeah. And if the focus is not on the people <laughs> who help the company to make money, save money, and the organizational goals, again, th the management is making some mistakes um, without, without that focus. And so I, I think that we are in a very precious time where we're seeing more noise out in the world about company cultures, about employee engagement, about psychological safety. I, and believe, I, think, I, believe, I, believe, I believe in it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and so already from where I sit, we're making noise, people are listening, now we need to take the next step for more action. And at some point, the majority of those who are looking um, to just focus on profits before people will slowly become the minority uh, of the future. Exactly, you are right. And uh, uh, Jessica, you know, there are a lot of people I am uh, just listening it and reading in the, the newspapers, in the journals, that just after the COVID-19, uh, the people are not uh, doing jobs anymore in the companies. They are resigning from the companies because of these cultures. So do you want to say anything? Because I was uh, reading in a newspaper, in the journal, that uh, uh, year 21 was the greatest uh, resignation year in the whole century because people don't want to work in the companies with the old cultures, with the old beliefs, where people are sitting and they are dictating them. Now the people want to use the Facebook, use the Twitter, use the social media, and uh, uh, have the boss employee impact as uh, uh, you know uh, uh, as their friends. So, uh, do you believe in it? Please tell us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this new generation of workers are that much more focused on on purpose. And, you know, in a lot of the coaching sessions that I offer, I'm hearing more and more of being connected to purpose. And those who are disconnected, I, you know, I can see how much it disturbs, um, you know, crying out, why am I wasting my time on meaningless work that doesn't serve what I'm meant to do? And there are more and more people who are having conversations with themselves, with their families. Am I meant to stay in this work? Or maybe I'm meant to do something else. And that means even leaving corporations and running their own businesses. And there is certainly a, a mindset. It's a, a, a certainly a shift in thinking uh, than, than what we, we had years before, uh, certainly before COVID. Well, exactly, because uh, Gen Zs are coming uh, in the power, Generation Zs, and uh, they believe that they have all the rights to uh, work with. They are the tech-oriented uh, generation, you know. Okay, uh, now I'm going to ask you, there is a mindset in the companies that, uh, you know, there are uh, people who don't train their employees or, to, or they don't want to train their employees. They don't want to invest in their employees to, to emphasize on their uh, psychological needs to train because they, they believe that they can leave the company within next six months, within one year. So why we need to invest on that? So what you will tell all those companies who are not investing on their employees? I would tell them that they're making a big mistake. Uh, because the fact is that the, to hire somebody um, is a tremendous cost already into the company. You want to retain the people uh, once they're there. There is a level of experience that's gained once they're there. And, um, and that as well involves training them. To me, it's a no-brainer. No um, keep the people happy by keeping them um, uh, 
giving them the skills and the training that's needed so they can effectively do their job. And ex if it's a big enough company to explore, um, you know, other opportunities within, all for the good of serving the company's purpose. Exactly. You are very, very true. Uh, you know, I was listening to the interview of a CEO of a company in Pakistan, as I am from Pakistan. He was saying that there are a worker who came to me that I don't have the enough money uh, for my medication. So I just raised the uh, medication uh, amount of all the employees. And you know what he was saying? He was saying that uh, we got the maximum profits in that uh, year, you know, because if you will invest on the people, the people will give it back to you. Uh, you know, by increasing their sales, by, by increasing the productivity. So what I believe the top management, uh, you know, should take care about the employees because, uh, Jessica, I'm all, I, I'm literally nowadays, I'm working on the psychological safety as well. And that's why I'm interviewing you because, you know, you are doing a, such a great job uh, on the LinkedIn and the people are liking what you are posting on the LinkedIn. So, how, what is the response of the people when you post on because uh, post on the LinkedIn? Because I have uh, seen that a lot of people are liking your posts, and uh, you know, how do you work on these posts, and uh, you know, how you get managed these stuff because it's a time-consuming stuff, you know. Well, to be honest, I I draw everything from my own experience. I've gone okay. through most of what is I've posted. I have gone through. And, and because a lot of what I post comes from stories, my own stories or stories I've heard from others, they resonate with others. And, okay. and I believe that's why um, there's a certain amount of engagement that comes with that. Stories to me is the beginning. I'm only just starting the work. Stories is a way to create awareness, but we need to make real change in organizations. And for me, I want to, you know, if I put myself in the shoes of somebody who is currently going through a difficult situation at work, who doesn't know what to do, um, yes, coaching will help for sure in their short term, but I'm looking for a root cause. I'm looking for systemic change. And for systemic change to happen, we need to move beyond the stories into changes in um, the measures and the policies um, in organizations. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I have another question in my mind, and uh, that is about uh, emotional intelligence. And, uh, you know, one of the most important things people should know. And I will start a question from, from an example. I have uh, read in the book that whenever a person is moving from middle management to the top management, his emotional intelligence gets decreased. Rather than it should increase, it gets decreased. He should understand the pupil. He should understand his employers. But he unable, because he always goes into strategic uh, uh, kind of stuff, you know. So that's why he is not uh, working on the problems of the uh, employers, you know. So what do you say when you uh, coach or what, when you counsel the employees or uh, organizations, uh, what is the role of emotional intelligence? Oh, it is paramount. Um, in every conversation, human beings are complex. No two human beings are the same. Even a twin is not the same on this earth. And right. so when we speak to each other, we need to have be aware of where is that person coming from? What's their perspective? What's the world they see? And you don't know that unless you ask the questions and or have some sort of interaction with them at that level of curiosity and when you come from a place of curiosity then you know okay how best to approach you know with the tone of voice and the words that are used um you know in that conversation yes, and so exactly. when engaging and when you're engaging with somebody at a senior level of course be aware of what are their challenges what do they desire what do they uh what are their goals what do they long for you know, in the context of their role and meet them where they're at. And um, yeah, that applies to applies to everyone, irrespective of-, of well, Jessica, Jessica, what I believe, I'm also doing uh, trainings on the emotional intelligence in Pakistan. I believe that uh, it's a science now. 
but most of the people, they don't know about NLP, Neuro Linguistic Language. They don't know about, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the intelligence kind of stuff. So what I believe, the emotional intelligence and NLP, they are both important when you are when you believe that you should go for a job to somewhere. Okay, so you people don't know. For example, let me tell you, I'm going to the office of my boss and my boss sitting there and he is like, he's in a furious stage, he is, he is not feeling good. Uh, I should come back. This is called emotional intelligence. I know about his emotions and then I react as my emotion that I should come back to the from his office. But most of the people, they don't know about the emotional intelligence. And what do you say? How they can improve their emotional intelligence? How they get to know other people so that they can be easy at the workplace? If they're not aware that how important it is, that's the first problem we need to solve. <laughs> so <laughs> if they're aware that emotional intelligence is key to connect with another person, then we can work from there. But they need to first be aware of that emotional intelligence is needed. Once they're aware, coming from that place of curiosity, true curiosity is the place where they they can take next. But if they don't know even how to do that, maybe it's what are the questions that need to be formulated? How do they come across in their body language and in their tone? This is where a peer may be able to give some feedback or a coach may be able to help them um, bring some yeah. of those questions. And that's why, we are, that's, where, that's why we are here to, uh, to give them awareness about the emotional intelligence. And, and you know, uh, I just got an example in my mind. When it, in the start of my career, when it does, I'm a mechanical engineer from the reputed university here in Pakistan. And, uh, uh, you know, I just uh, always, uh, you know, I thought that why I'm not getting that recognition as there is an other uh, colleague of mine who is uh, getting that recognition. Then I worked on that colleague and I just seen that he got a very good emotional intelligence than me. I was good at IQ. He was good at EQ. So I just grabbed EQ from him, uh, Piro, and uh, uh, then afterwards, uh, I just grabbed how to I can get the emotion intelligence. I read the books of emotional intelligence. I read the books of uh, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And then uh, I, go, I do good with my bosses, you know. It's a great deal how to get good with your bosses, you know? Every boss is different, but every boss at the end of the day is a human being as well. Yeah, absolutely. So so why people don't raise their voices? Why they don't talk to the management regarding their issues, you know, Jessica? I just want to ask you, why they don't go to the management? I know a lot of people, they don't go to the management. Yeah, again, it's a very complex, you know, situation as you, the answer is unique to the individual. So, you know, they might not go to the management because they just simply do not trust that what they say will actually be heard and understood. Um, and even if it is heard and understood, would action be taken? They might okay. not go uh, to the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I am just going through your website and it's saying that psychological safety is feeling free to express one's thought without fear of negative consequences. Yes. So this is the fear of talk. You know, the people are uh, fearful that their boss will fire them and, you know, uh, what will happen? So should I talk to them or like this? So so that's why I'm asking you about this time. Yeah. So fear can come from, okay, maybe I'm going to lose face. Maybe I'm going to be fired. Maybe I'm going to be demoted. Maybe I won't get that raise. Maybe I'm going to, there's going to be, uh, I'm going to be bullied at the end of it. I can speak about the corporate world. I'm sure it applies to, you know, other workplaces in the corporate world. Nothing is always is black and white. Sometimes there are backroom discussions that happen that you do not see. And so the impact on you is negative, whatever it, 
you know, it, some sort of negativity, but you don't know what has gone on behind the scenes. Exactly. And, and so it's, it goes back to what are the stories that we are saying in our workplace? What are the stories we're saying to each other? And, and are those stories, but most likely holding us back from going to top management? Yeah, that's very true. And, you know, many hardworking uh, employees they just leave because of the bad behaviors of the bosses, you know, the bad behaviors of the management. They just leave the company. They are paying good. They are excellent at their work. But because of their psychological safety, they are just leaving the, uh, uh, you know, organizations. So, Jessica, just uh, uh, we are getting out of time. So just tell me how we can uh, aware the people regarding their psychological safety and uh, what is about your campaign, how people are reacting to your campaign. Like I am a member of your campaign and I am doing everything what you want people to do in their uh, respective area. So what do you say to the people? How, you get, how they can join your company? Okay. So I see this as a movement and I believe that a movement is what is required to make real change in our world. Um, it's not just by talking, but again, by action. Action, yes, yes. Our mission for Vanguard Voices is to bring it to the top of workplace agendas, this, the topic of psychological safety. And the way we do that is through shared voice and through bold action. So what am I asking people to do? At, um, the first thing that I'm asking is for people to join um, you know, our mailing list. So to go on our website, vanguardvoices.com. So how many members you have right now? So how many people have joined you right now? Um, we have, yeah, numbers are right now not important, but they're like, I have about 16,000 no, followers. No, I, on mean, I, I mean, there are a lot of people who are joining you in, in your campaign. What I want to ask you. Oh, there's there's a number of I don't have a specific number and there's some some hundreds of people that are okay, that are okay. in the mailing list. Okay. Uh, but we are in the early stages. You're li literally speaking to me at, at an early stage. Um, we haven't hardly ever begun. I've started this campaign by just myself posting on LinkedIn. Um, now you know, more people need to say the same. More people need to share their stories. And we need to do this in a way that is a steady drumbeat. That's the way how I see it. A movement is the same action repeated again and again, and it needs to be a simple action again and again in a steady drumbeat. And so this is not about me. It's not about one. This is about many doing the same. So we start with stories. We start with people giving their pledges of support. We have digital badges that can be given. Okay. But what we... What so when, going... I, when I'm getting my digital badge, you know, I'm working for it. The, the badge, yeah. well, there is, there, yeah. so on our website, there is an oath, you know, kind of saying, I promise um, to nurture psychological safety to the best of my ability. So again, if this okay. is on the website. And then when people take this, they can have this badge that they can put on their LinkedIn. Okay. So okay. This, is, this is all in the name of creating awareness. But then the next step is that we want to work with companies and we want to work with companies where management, first of all, believes that psychological safety needs to be prioritized. And with them, we will hold the workshops and trainings and everything that's needed to embed it from top down, bottom up, side to side. And when we are working with those companies, that drumbeat will get louder. And we also provide for the individuals the one-on-one -on -one coaching support that's needed. Jessica, uh, you know, I wish you very best of luck for your campaign. And I am a part of your campaign. And uh, uh, that's why I interviewed you, because I love your campaign. Because uh, I really do care about the people. I really do care about the psychological safety of the people. And uh, wish you all the best. And I hope so you get again in my show very, very soon. Well, you're talking to you, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you for the Thank time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, Jessica, that was the end of the show. And it was really a pleasure talking to you.